Today I'm going to show you step by step how to paint these lovely little koi fish in watercolor. Now I want this painting project to be a joyful experience and in order to make that possible let's just take a moment and I want you to make a commitment to yourself to enjoy the process and focus on the journey not on the result. Do not compare your painting to mine or anyone else's. You are going to create something unique and beautiful today. Something only you can make. So together, let's shed any fear, guilt, or self-imposed pressure. Find a quiet and peaceful place to set up, grab your paints, and join me. All you need is some watercolor paper, a brush, a water jar, paper towels or a sponge, and some paints, and some optional supplies would be a spray bottle and a heat tool or hair dryer. These are the supplies I'll be using, a 5 by 7 inch block of Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cotton cold pressed paper, a silver black velvet size 10 round brush, and a smaller size 6 round brush for details, a mechanical pencil, and my paint colors today are Holbein Scarlet Lake and Marine Blue, Windsor & Newton Transparent Orange, and Daniel Smith Indigo. Of course, you do not need to use the exact same colors I'm using, just use whatever paint brands you have. I will be showing you how to sketch the fish onto the paper, but if sketching intimidates you, I got Gotcha. There is a link in the description where you can download my free traceable line drawing. You can go ahead and print that sketch and just use transfer paper or a light box or a window to trace the image onto your watercolor paper. Creating art should be a stress-free experience, but sometimes, let's face it, that's just not the case. I find that when I maybe care a little bit too much about the outcome, I tend to feel anxious and tense when I'm painting. If, like me, you have experienced some stress, anxiety, depression, or just frustration in your art, that's okay. It's totally normal. It's a normal part of the art journey. For me, I do have tendencies towards depression and it's actually taken me a long time to learn what triggers those feelings. Sometimes talking through your emotions can be a great way to process those feelings and just navigate the ups and downs of being an artist. I found therapy to be so incredibly helpful. It's given me the gift of greater self-awareness and it's equipped me with tools that have helped me know how to better deal with those negative emotions. So before we get into the Demo, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. If you've never done therapy before, I get it. Starting out can be kind of hard. The right therapist may not be in your area and maybe you feel a little bit awkward with face-to-face -face interaction. With BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, as a video chat, or even via messaging if you prefer that. Whatever's the most comfortable version of therapy for you. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than may be available in your area. To get started, you just fill out a question questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you'll get matched with your therapist, in most cases within 48 hours or less. You'll be able to schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. If the therapist you're first matched with doesn't feel like the right fit, which can be common when you're starting therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. We spend hours every week taking care of our physical needs, making food, going to the gym, doing our hair, so why not give your mind the same kind of attention. I completely believe that the world would be a better place if everyone had a therapist. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. If you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash art by Emily. Clicking that link not only supports this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. So today's Koi Fish Painting Project is going to be a relaxing little sanctuary of art playtime. We're going to take our time, explore some fun techniques that will allow us to let go of control, and just enjoy the amazing effects that are possible when you let watercolor do its thing. So I have my watercolor block vertically aligned. I've got my water jar and my sponge right next to my paint palette. Using a pencil, gently sketch on the first fish. For my first fish, I'm going to create a curved shape, and I want the nose of the fish to be pointing upwards with the tail kind of moving in the opposite direction. Now you might be wondering, how did I design the fish for this painting? And the truth is I was looking at a bunch of different Google photos and other watercolor paintings of koi fish and using all of those as inspiration for this design. So this is my design, but it is something that I came up with by looking at a lot of different images. So I want that to give you some freedom here this is your painting. You can move the fish around. You can have them pointing in different directions. You could add more than two fish. 
make it your own. Now to make them look like koi fish, there are a couple of important little elements to add, such as that little stripe on the back of the fish's body, which represents that top fin, two little fins on the side next to the head, and then two more smaller fins just behind it. It almost looks like four little legs, and then of course a long swishing tail. For the second fish, I'm gonna have the face of this fish pointing downwards, so in the opposite direction, kind of a yin-yang formation. I felt like when we're working on something that's you know, supposed to indicate a peaceful mindset, this composition just really feels peaceful to me. It feels balanced and, and comfortable. You could have your fish swimming in the same direction or coming towards each other like this. I just find that this is a really lovely and classic composition for two koi fish to be swimming towards each other in an S curve. So once again, you can start with the curved shape of the body, add that dorsal fin on the top, a curved tail, and four little flippers coming out. Once you're finished with your sketch, it's time to start preparing your paint. It's a good idea to use a spray bottle if you have paints on a palette that are dried out like this to spritz the paints first and pre-wet them so they're ready to use. It's up to you if you wanna start with the water or start with the fish. For this particular painting, I decided I'm going to start with the fish. So I'm taking my large brush, wetting it and removing excess water. And then I'm going to take some water and soak it into the paper on my first fish. Notice how I let the water extend beyond the tail a little bit. But as I paint the water into the fish itself, I'm just watching out for that dorsal fin painting around that. Wherever you want your paint to go, this is where we're wetting the paper. And if there are areas where you want to preserve the white of the paper, avoid those with your water for now. So I'm allowing the water to extend beyond some of those fins. And this is going to allow the paint, when I put it down, to blend softly. So here I'm activating my paint by wetting it. And I'm going to start with Winsor Newton Transparent Orange. I'm mixing it up on my palette so I can get a feel for how thick the paint is. I want it to be kind of a creamy paint consistency. And the more water you have mixed in, you'll notice the faster it will flow on a wet surface. So having thicker paint will allow for a little bit slower flow of the paint. You can just watch the water and paint work together and do their thing. And this is where it's okay to just let the paint do what it wants let it happen you'll notice how it's just kind of flowing out and even beyond my pencil marks keep in mind that outside of the fish you're going to be painting some water some blue colors so it's okay if a little of your orange or red overlap into the water and outside of your pencil lines this is a great exercise in just kind of letting go of that i've actually grabbed a darker red this is totally optional, but I wanted to make the underside of the fish just look a little bit darker, like it's turning down towards the shadow. So I'm painting that along the bottom right edge of the fish. With koi fish, you'll often see they have a lot of white and colored spots. And so it's important to mix up the shapes. Maybe don't paint it all a solid color, unless that's what you want to do. but I think having a couple of spots painted in with some of the white still showing looks really nice. Now this is Marine Blue by Holbein. It's just a nice cool blue, which means it leans a little more green. And I'm using that to paint in some of the white sections of the fish, well, areas that I'm deciding are going to be white, like this center section of the body and the underside of those fins. Do you see how the paint is just spreading out and softening around wherever I put the water. That's a beautiful, good thing, embrace that. If you're starting to freak out and you're thinking, oh no, I lost control, that's okay, don't freak out. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be beautiful. And I think you might find you'll be happier with it if you use more water than if you try to paint it in too controlled and tight of a way. So I'm bringing that marine blue very lightly watered down into the fins and into the head a little bit painting in the eyes, just working slowly, methodically. Grabbing a little bit more of my orange and extending that spot. 
just along that dorsal fin so that the white of the fin stands out even stronger. You can add a little subtle shadow across the fin as well. Already from this overhead view, I think that's a good start. Now it's time to move on to the second fish, and for this one I'm going to use red. I'm starting again by painting with water inside of the fish's body, painting around the dorsal fin, extending the water into the tail. I have a good sense of what's going to happen now that I've already done the first fish, and it, it can free you up to think, oh, I can do this. I can do this a little easier. I know what I'm doing. So here I'm grabbing Scarlet Lake. That's my beautiful crimson red. And dropping that in. Isn't that fun when you see the paint just flow and explode into the wet paper? It's one of my favorite things about watercolor. And wherever you left areas dry, your paint's going to flow around those areas, creating a crisp edge. I think that looks so cool. So you can see I'm painting around that fin and around a spot on the center of the head. This is already yielding the result of making the fish look rather shiny and wet. And I think it's really, really fun. All right, I'm rinsing out the red and switching back to my orange. I'm gonna drop in just a little bit of orange into this fin. It's okay to use both orange and red in the same fish. <laughs> I'm giving you permission to use whatever colors you want. Sometimes we need to be told that that's okay. There are no rules here. Make these fish your own. Put the spots wherever you want too. You do not have to copy my exact placement of the spots. What I'm doing here is just softening some of the edges. I've removed most of the water from my brush on the sponge and just gently scrubbing along those edges just to help it appear a little bit less harsh. And then I take my heat tool and I'm drying those layers. Of course, the hair dryer works well, or you can just let it completely air dry. Grab yourself a cup of coffee and come back. Now I'm taking a spray bottle. This is a fine mister something fun that I've just been trying out recently and spraying it across the top of the fish just kind of trying to avoid the head and any of the areas that I want to preserve the white. Of course it won't be perfect because when you're spraying it's going to be a little bit messy. There will be overspray but you can see the head on this fish on the right is still quite dry and I do want to preserve the whiteness there. So now I've switched to my brush and I'm pushing and pulling the water around the fishes and this is really just going to block out wherever I want to put some blue for my water. So wherever you want to apply paint, pre-wetting the surface will allow for some soft, beautiful edges and that flowage of paint that we think is so beautiful in watercolor, but also so unpredictable. So this is where you get to experiment with some fun blotting motions with your brush. Grab your dark color, this is Daniel Smith Indigo, and start carefully painting around your fish but wherever you've pre-wet the paper, enjoy that explosion of color. Enjoy that fuzzing out effect. This is one of my favorite things ever to do. This is wet on wet. And of course, because we sprayed the paper, some of the paint will seep into the fish a little bit. Now, initially this might be a little surprising, but I want you to embrace that and enjoy the look of blue overlapping your fish. Ultimately, this is going to help your fish look more engaged in its environment and like it's swimming in water. And what we're creating here is both hard edges and soft edges. And for a really good painting, you want it to have a variety of edges like that. Right here, I'm creating a hard edge around the fish's face. And then everywhere the paper is wet, the paint is just continuing to flow and soften out. And those are creating soft edges those areas where the paint flows, and where we allow some of the paint to overlap into the fish, we are getting something called lost edges. We're losing where we put pencil marks. Again, that's a beautiful thing. Just embrace it. I'm dropping some of my Scarlet Lake that I used on that second fish into the water. This is a beautiful way to kind of mute the blue even more and to create some color harmony between the fish and the water. This is lots of water in my brush right now, which is causing some blooms or cauliflowers. And in this case, I think that is absolutely beautiful. 
Sometimes you want to avoid this effect, but when you're working with a loose textural background kind of setting, it can be one of the most beautiful and fun things ever. Uh, you can also lift some color out if you find that it's just crossing over the fins a little bit too much like you saw me doing there. But again, embrace that look of water and fish merging together as one. You could also do some spatter. I'm just gently tapping my brush to drop some of the paint onto the paper. You can see how wet it still is. And there are areas of the paper that aren't as wet. So if that's the case, lay down some brush strokes and watch hard edges form and enjoy that juxtaposition of hard edges and soft edges. As you paint closer to the fish, use more careful brush strokes and work more slowly so that you can paint around your careful sketch. But again, where you see the overlap of blue into the fins, I think it looks so beautiful. We're getting some lovely lost edges there. Here I'm going to lift out some paint from the fins again. I'm using my smaller brush. This is the Silver Black Velvet size 6. But as long as you're using something with stiff bristles that has almost no water in it, it should be just damp. You can gently lift color back out and then dip back in the paint and keep working. I'm adding more red into the... Ooh, look at how much water dropped in just now. If that happens, Move it around, pick up your painting and let it just slide around on the paper. See what happens. Have fun, just play. Here I'm painting some more of that lightly tinted indigo just around the tail fin. And use your brush to push and pull your brush strokes and create shapes. You know, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I have struggled with depression and just feelings of inadequacy especially throughout the course of my art career and sometimes that can be really crippling especially when you're working on something that's really challenging your skills you feel like oh I really can't do this and all those negative thoughts come rushing in this blossom that just happened because I put all this water on the paper is one of those things that I've learned through experience and just through lots of brush miles logged that it's not the end of the painting. This can be used and adjusted and made better. So what I've just done is drop in some really dark creamy indigo here and that's helping kind of darken up that shape again and pull it all together. Not to say that we're trying to control the watercolor here, but you do definitely have the ability to roll with the punches when it comes to what happens with your painting, especially if there are little accidents that happen. We, of course, Bob Ross called them happy accidents. You can definitely use those little areas that were out of your control and pull it together into something beautiful. And that's something that just takes practice and experience and play to discover for yourself. But yeah, I know that many of us struggle with feelings of inadequacy. If that's you, just know that you're not alone. I think women in particular tend to really struggle with lack of confidence and more often than not, I think we're definitely capable of much more than we give ourselves credit for, but it definitely takes some self-awareness to be able to step back and see that. And I think it is also so important to just celebrate once in a while, not once in a while, celebrate more often. We don't celebrate enough our little achievements, our little wins throughout the week. Celebrating is going to give you that little dopamine boost you need to propel you on through the hard things to get to the next good thing. And I'm reminding myself as much as everyone else just to take a moment to be grateful and to celebrate. So here I'm just drawing the water. We've just finished that whole section and now is where we get to kind of tighten, fine tune, and add any finishing details that we want. This would be a fun painting to tape the edges around and fill it all in if you wanted to paint the water from edge to edge. I opted for fun edges just using wet and wet and not completing the whole painting. And if you prefer brighter colors, of course, you could use more turquoises and greens. That might be a really fun thing to experiment with too. You'll notice that as I dry, the paint shifts and moves and creates these beautiful fuzzy effects. I love how that looks. 
I'm grabbing a little bit more of my marine blue and now is my chance to really tighten up and add any finishing details. I'm going to use this to swipe along the edge of the fish so that it looks more rounded and cylindrical in its body shape. A little of that color along the fin and along the underside of the belly really help its shape look more round and shiny. Now something that's bothering me here is that some of that indigo bled into the front of the fish's face. So I'm just gently taking a mostly clean damp brush and soaking up, scrubbing that area a little bit to remove the indigo that's overlapping and restore the, the shape of the fish's face. And then I'm using some light indigo to paint in the eyes. This is my smaller brush for those details. Can also add some darker shadow details really important not to be heavy-handed with these. Sometimes it just takes some tiny little micro adjustments with small brush strokes to add just that little bit of yes to the final touches of your painting. I'm adding a couple wider brush strokes to the tail fin. You'll notice the tails almost disappear into the water and that was something I really wanted to achieve here with the overlap of water and paint across the tail. I think it looks really cool. So if you've reached a point where you're happy with it, just set your brushes down and celebrate and say, yes, I did this. I hope you enjoyed today's koi fish tutorial. I had so much fun painting this. It really was relaxing for me too. And I'd love to see your version of this painting. Tag me on Instagram and I'll check it out. Thanks for watching.